Stugatz here for a hotel tonight. I love this app. It's not a website. It's just an app, and I absolutely love it. I have used it, and I will tell you a story in just a second here, guys. But if you need to get away and you're looking for a great deal on a hotel, then you need Hotel Tonight. You got to get this app. And again, it is just an app. It is not a website. You can wait until the last minute and still score a crazy good deal at a super cool hotel. They have partnered with some amazing hotels. And I will tell you a quick story here with the Hotel Tonight app. My wife and I decided we wanted to stay down on South Beach in Miami where I work for the night. And the day of, at around 2.30, I went to the app. I asked for options. They gave me some fantastic options. We stayed at one of our favorite hotels for 50% less than we normally pay. It is amazing. So download the app today, and you'll get deals very similar to the ones I got just a couple of weeks ago. Download the Hotel Tonight app. Start booking better deals at better hotels right now. Something better just came along. Hotel Tonight. This is the best of the Dan Lebatar show with the Stugatz podcast. Greg Cody of the Miami Herald in with us today. He's got opinions on hibachi restaurants and Mother's Day wishes. We will get to those at some point during the show. Greg Cody objects to the blanket uh, offering of Happy Mother's Day to all mothers when there are some bad mothers out there. Uh, Greg Cody wants uh, only the good mothers to get a happy Mother's Day and the bad mothers to get an un- uh, an unhappy Mother's Day. Yes. Do, you you also, do you also get bothered like on social media when everyone says, oh, to the greatest mother in the world? Like everyone's mother's not the greatest mother in the world. Yeah. Why does bothered. everyone think they have the best mother? Yeah, it bothers me. My mother's me. the best mother. Yeah, when J.J. Watt does that, it bothers me. Yeah, my mother had her faults. She would under-season food like you wouldn't believe. Uh, you know, a pretty good cook, but just not uh, no seasoning whatsoever. Come on, put for, a little salt on there, would you? For those of you who don't know, Greg Cody's parents come from a family of cooking. His uh, father has a Purple Heart uh, jumping from a truck during the Army and hurting his ankle. <laughs> I think he fell uh, from the bed of a truck. I don't think he jumped. <laughs> <laughs> was there were there any details? They pushed. Were, no, there, were, there. were there any details given by your father of whether it was a moment of heroism or clumsiness? Uh, he la- he could laugh about it. Okay, he so could laugh about it. I would love to know where that purple heart is. By the way, so this this truck ride was it like a supplies run? It was he was it, it was a troop carrier, and uh, where he was headed to or from, I'm not sure. I'm not privy to that wait, wait, uh, wait information. A wait a minute. What do you mean? Your late father, you don't know or haven't seen his purple heart. Yeah, it's been lost in time. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. You come in here every damn week bringing some musty piece of garbage from your garage. Today was a 1993 Marlins program. Yeah, you're yeah, on re- item. You're on reruns. You have brought your several items. There's been a wooden horse that smelled like mildew that you brought in here. But those are his items. I but mean. what do you mean? How do you not know where your father's purple heart is when you when you're you know you and your father were very close? Yeah, that miniature horse was plastic, by the way, not wood. Uh, my giant. Pinocchio is made of wood. Um, you know, I just never I, – I would love to know where that Purple Heart is because obviously it's something that I would cherish to have. Uh, I'll ask my I, older brother Guillermo, about are that. You, are you questioning? Are you like I me don't know what's where going Greg on Cody's here. father was a liar? I'm looking this up because I can find a list of all pur- Purple Greg Heart Cody's winners. Greg Cody's father may be exists. giving uh, – spreading uh, – passing down generational lies. Not at all. I will give you my father's full name. Uh, How have you rank. not seen – all right. Yeah, ahead, I want to put this on the poll as well wait, wait, at Levitard Show. Guys, guys, are we sure we want to do this? Like, this is a part of his legacy, and Greg has believed it for so long. <laughs> Why can't we just yeah. let Greg believe it? I believe what the truth is. Uh, my father was a Purple Heart recipient. Why would you never ask to see it? Like, if Stugatz is like, I won a Grammy Award, I'd be like, cool, can I see it? You know, as a kid, you don't, you know, I don't know. Maybe he lost it in a poker game. What do I know? Maybe he sold it. It could be. That was before eBay. Well, Greg Cody. Still have eBay? Greg Cody brings Or maybe in, he never got one. Do they still have eBay? Greg Cody of the Miami Herald comes in here, and he brings in a 1993 Marlins yeah. program. Collector's item. Yeah. And he starts asking me, what's this worth? And I'm like, not very much. And Stugatz is like, is it signed by the whole team? Who is it signed by? And Greg Cody is trying to work a deal to find out what the Marlins program is worth. Can we auction it off right now on the air, Mike? Can we? Can well, we does Greg auction? want to do that? No, all, I don't want to do that. That's I'm keeping yeah. that. If it were signed by everybody, to me, that would devalue it. 
What do I? What do I? I want Scott Pose's signature, <laughs> um, muddying up my my collector's item. Come on. Was there a player on that team where their signature would increase the value? Like it was on that opening day, Marlon Benito Santiago, <laughs> Jeff Conine, Mister Marlin, who played for seven teams. Sometimes it's better to believe the lie. Let him believe the lie. I remember my grandfather used to do this thing when I'd ride in the car with him, and he would tell me, blow out the light, and I would, and it would turn green. It was amazing. I thought he had a superpower. And then my friends pulled me aside and said that he was just looking at the yellow light on the opposite end of the street. <laughs> I was 24 years old. It rocked my world. <laughs> I, I had so many fights with my father right. over wrestling, thinking that it was real. And we had... So many damn arguments about Jimmy Superfly Snooker, just screaming arguments where he'd say this dope that wrestling was fixed. And I knew it was real. And I'm like, because look at what Jimmy Superfly Snooker just did. He jumped off the top rope and landed on that guy. How could that be fake? What's your dad's full name? Wilfred Joseph Ooh. Cody. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. I found Don't a Wilfred this. A. Cody from Michigan that won a Purple Heart. Well, that's obviously an incomplete list. Chris, do you think, Chris, do you believe, how many Purple Heart recipients are there? Chris, do you believe that right in front of our ears right now, your family's whole wartime legacy is falling apart do you believe that your grandfather was actually a purple heart recipient as we sit here i don't know what to believe anymore my whole childhood this was always a thing so now i i'm kind of shook i don't know if my dad's lying i don't know if my grandfather lied to my dad the government might be lying i found 13 surname cody's who have purple hearts one wilfred a from michigan is it possible he had another name <laughs> <laughs> not that I, not that I'm aware of. Well, it uh, seems like there are a lot of lies in your family history, so there's a lot of things you're not aware of. Okay, what's what's uh, the the medal that ranks just below the Purple Heart? Is there oh, like a is there like there a tin go. heart? Here we go. Uh, like here a, we go. Here we go. Like a copper heart. Maybe? Here's where know. everything it's falls the orange apart. Lung. <laughs> now I know who was lying. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> your doubt has been removed. Yep. Okay, let's move on right, awkwardly. I'm, in, I'm not leaving this alone. For the show I am, obviously, but I will investigate this, and I'll start by interrogating my older brother. <laughs> All right, call him on the phone right now. <laughs> call Uncle Dick. Yeah, let's play. Oh, I'm not going to call him on call the phone Call Uncle right Dick. Now. Let's call. So, LeBron's got one of those games tonight, Stugat. Uh, he does. I'm not certain what he wants to do with tonight's game. Like, does he want the, uh, does he want his career in Cleveland to be over or does he want to extend it out to the NBA finals or did he watch Golden State and say, Hey, enough of this. I'm done. <laughs> like, let's get out of here. I happen to think that, listen, it's one of those games and I think LeBron will do what LeBron does, which is a monster game, 40 to 60 points, somewhere in that range. And the Cavaliers will tie that thing up at one game apiece. Yeah, it, it seems like we've seen this before where, you know, the over-under on LeBron tonight's got to be 35 points because we've seen it before where he has the, the mortal game, uh, he shoots 6 for 15 or whatever it was, and then he comes back with a monster game. Hey, I'm still LeBron, damn it. And, and it seems like we see that all the time from him. We saw it when he was with the Heat several times. If you watched last night, if you stayed up and watched, the Warriors against the Rockets. The Warriors, uh, the game was tied at the half. Stugatz had so many predictions out there that he was right about a lot and he was wrong about a lot. Yep. Um, Mostly right, but yeah. Uh, well, you're betting, now yeah. that the Supreme Court allowed betting, mm -hmm. you're betting. You said you were going to bet first quarter, Warriors, yep. first half. It's not really how, how it works. No. It's not, you know, they make their decision and you can all of a sudden just bet with impunity. Well, it's not. But I'm saying if you could have, you would have. Quarter, half, game. The game was my five-star of David Play. Well, let me hear the prediction yesterday. Let's find out. Stugatz just, he basically sprays the entire, he just sprays feces all over the place. That grandma, go ahead and look it up on uh, on the internet. That grandma who, um, a monkey threw feces at her, and then she looked like she had a hooked nose. Because, oh, yeah, because feces was just hanging from her nose. She looked like a Muppet. Cause, cause ape feces was hanging from her nose. That's what Sugats does. He just sprays those opinions all over the place. Let's see how much he got right yesterday. Tonight is one of those things where a team is geared up their entire season and their entire roster to play the NBA champions. And I think tonight they just let them know, kind of like LeBron does occasionally. Hey, you're not even close. You're not even close. 
You spent all this time, all this money, all these resources to try to compete with us, and guess what? You're not even close. A half into the game. I think Golden State's going to blow them out tonight. I think they're going to win that series of four or five games. I really do. I was off by a half, but my overall point, I mean, right, right? If you're Houston today, you're thinking, wow, James Harden did that, and we weren't even close. I mean, seriously. That's pretty good analysis. The series is over. I mean, <laughs> James Harden's going to play better than that? And Chris Paul better, because I'm telling you right now, those last three buckets, they don't count. Chris Paul had 17 points last night. Yeah, they didn't get Chris Paul to have 17 points and three assists in game one of the Western Conference Finals. Chris Paul, if you're one of the all-time greats, you're supposed to go out there last night, game one Western Conference Finals, against Steph Curry, against a legendary team. You're supposed to go out there and help James Harden out. That's what Clay Thompson did. He helped out Kevin Durant. Chris Paul gave James Harden nothing, and he disappears for minutes at a time. Minutes at a time. Last night, they needed 35 points, 15 assists out of Chris Paul. He gave them nothing. Mike, look up uh, the game log. This is one of those things. That when betting does become legal, it's stuff like this. Did you see what happened at the end of that game with the over? The over was 224. Go read the game logs on the bad beat that people took if they went under because they bet the great defense of Houston and Golden State. Because those Chris, those Chris, the, the Rockets down 11 with the Warriors having the ball. And like 19, 12 seconds left, fouled on purpose to hit the over. Fouled on purpose. Andre yes, Iguodala, Iguodala, they were, they were one under and then Iguodala hit two free throws. The Rockets fouled intentionally. James Harden down 11 with the Warriors with 12 seconds left. That's the kind of game that is going to make people crazy <laughs> once gambling is legal. <laughs> ESPN radio is presented by Progressive Home Insurance. Getting a quote is easier than ever. The NBA Eastern Conference Finals are on ESPN Radio. Tune in tonight for Game 2 as Jason Tatum and the Celtics host LeBron and the Cavs. Presented by Indeed, coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern on most ESPN radio stations. Here's your Sports Center update. NBA playoffs, Game 1 of the West Finals goes to the Warriors. Kevin Durant dropped 37 points. James Harden, he scored 41. Chris Paul gave him nothing. Former Steelers minority owner David Tepper is expected to finalize the purchase. Chris Paul was the leading rebounder on the court for both teams, by the they way. They didn't get him the rebound. Okay, that's what Capella does. That's what Harden does. That's I'm what just Arena's saying, nobody to do. rebounded better than Chris Paul last night. Uh, how were the assist numbers? I, I'm just telling you. <laughs> uh, how were the assist numbers? He was a disaster last night in the Western. Was he not? Are you, you sit here and make an argument that Chris Paul was good last night? Is that what you're going to do? Is that what you're going to do? <laughs> Top 10 point guard in the history of the NBA, according to Stephen A. Smith. Forget about those three baskets at the end. They don't count. He was 5 of 14. He get A point guard gave you three assists. You've never sounded more like Russo. Never. A point guard. Are you going to make an argument? Will you finish the damn segment? $2.2 billion, David Tepper. I think he just paid for it all. There were higher offers, and he just said, here, I don't want to make those higher offers go away. $2.2 billion. Uncle Dick, next! Don Libertard. There's fascination in power rankings. In fact, I'm coming out with a power ranking for power rankings, which ESPN's NFL power ranking right now is debuting at number third on my list. Right. So it's a good power ranking. Stugatz. Well, who's two and one on that list? Well, you know, I'm, this it, is it, where his story falls apart. No, because it's a competing, <laughs> it's a non ESPN entity, so we don't want to uh, air it on this, uh, Hattie play airtime. This is the Don Levatar show with the Stugatz on ESPN radio. This may be very hard straight talk for Greg Cody, who has spent his life thinking his father's late father was a war hero, got a purple heart. The entire family thought so, but Greg Cody's never seen it. So we'll get to Uncle Dick Cody, a family historian, in a second. But first, what was that news you were reading on the Internet, Stugatz? Uh, ESPN Films and Netflix are partnering for a multi-part 10-hour documentary about Michael Jordan. 2019 is when it's expected to come out. Jordan has signed off on his participation. I cannot wait for that. I wonder if he negotiated oh. that it had to be longer than the OJ one. <laughs> by, by one minute. <laughs> Ahmad Rashad sitting in that seat right now waiting yep. for production, right? Yep. Oh, he has figured out his own lighting. Yep. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. 
because O.J. Simpson's story, I thought, was something that was broad enough to capture a lot of things outside of sports. I'm not sure how much a 10-hour Michael Jordan documentary will do that, even as he is probably the most transcendent athlete of our lifetime. I, I'd love to learn things about him, though, because he was he was written about a ton and then really concealed, somehow real. Like, I don't think he would even be allowed to exist that way today. Today, the way that social media works, I don't think that Michael Jordan would be allowed to have the things that he had going on in private without them becoming public. He usually controls the projects that he takes part in. If I'm getting 10 hours of what other people have to say about Michael and Michael's there to rebut some of this stuff and give his side of stuff, I'm in on that. But I don't want it to be a propaganda machine either. It's Jordan, man. I'm in on anything. 10 mm-hmm. hours. Like, give me 10 hours of highlights and uh, I'll sit there and I'll I, watch I, them all. I, but I want, I want the stuff that you heard in the Hall of Fame speech where he bared his teeth. Like that. I don't want the, the, the sneaker campaign marketing propaganda. Uh, I, I don't want the carefully shaped, I've told you about being in China, getting kicked in the back by a Nike representative in a small Japanese or Chinese hotel room, kicked in the back uh, because I was asking Michael Jordan on camera too many questions about sweatshops. Yeah, we knew you'd tie in your time in China with Michael Jordan. <laughs> yeah, of course. Just knew that was coming. Mm-hmm. Aimed yeah. bets on that. Yep. Had to get close to the story. Couldn't help myself. Mm-hmm. ESPN is doing something. What? I did something once. <laughs> uh, all right. Uncle Dick Cody is there. Uh, go ahead, Greg. Interview your brother about uh, what appears to be some discrepancies in what might be a counterfeit war path. Okay. Here's the thing. Uh, I grew up, I don't know if you did, I grew up thinking for some reason that dad won a Purple Heart while in while overseas. Korea, right? Not... not uh, I don't believe he's in World War II. I think it was Korea. So what do you know about that? What do you remember? Christ almighty, Greg. It was actually World War II. Okay, there you go. Uh-huh. And uh, I don't know exactly where, but the, it exists. I have held it in my hand. There you go. The Purple Heart I'm talking about. And, uh, you know, as you might guess, it's kind of like a purple ribbon in the bottom. is a heart-shaped thing with a silhouette of a... I think it was George Washington. Right. So you have seen but the Purple Heart. where is it? Where? Why does this family well, not have the Purple Heart, Dick? That, that is a good question. You know, my mother passed away in uh, 15, and uh, I haven't seen it since then. I remember cleaning out her house and going through drawers, and I have seen it in her bedroom bureau drawer. Wow. But uh, I have not seen it in five years. So I don't know what happened. I'm wondering. This is a mystery. If a Purple Heart can be, uh, you know, declared lost and replaced. A good question. Because as far as I'm concerned, it's lost. Right. Yeah, I would like to uh, see it and hold it in my hand. Yeah, yeah. I've, you know, I've had a, yeah, it. It does exist, and I've I've looked at it. And how did he? Uh, how did he get it? What are, What are the details of how he got I, it? I I'm not sure. You know, the standard story is you're shot on the rear end, and you know, I get a Purple Heart. Right. But uh, I'm not sure of that really. Does it have his name on it? <laughs> I don't think so. Could it be oh stolen? <laughs> to the best. Uh, Did your father be, steal a Purple Heart? Uh, I don't know. I, like I say, I haven't seen it in. Uh, All right. It's probably been five, six, eight years since All I've right. seen it. Thank you, Dick. We appreciate it. Okay. All right, uh, Guillermo. Put it on the poll. Are Greg, Greg, and Dick Cody terrible sons? <laughs> Aquí lo que importa es el catch. Color me vindicated. At least Dick had the right war, man. I mean, at least he Un- knew the war. Unbelievable, yeah. the ignorance yeah. of the family history. World War II. Trust me, you guys don't want to go through the process of replacing the lost Purple Heart. It sounds like uh, you're going to find something you're not going to like. No, By the I, way, I do want to... in 30 minutes, our show gets younger. Bud Grant is going to join <laughs> us. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yes, the garage sale. Bud Grant's annual garage sale is this week. Last year was his last one, and right. he's back again. He's this a scammer. Year, this year, he has pledged last one. He's a scammer. <laughs> I, we got we to gotta grill him about this. Bud's always saying it's the last one. It's never the last one. He's always got more items in the garage, including a fraudulent Purple Heart. Heart that once belonged to the Cody's. Don Libertard. My dad did win a Purple Heart. I asked him once how he won the Purple Heart because you always think of you know her- heroism in war. Uh, my dad was a cook, an army cook, and he won a Purple Heart for falling off uh, a truck and breaking his ankle. Stugats. So 
not all Purple Heart winners are like heroes who save an entire battalion from really? enemy gunfire. Yes. But, you know, God bless the Purple Heart winner. That's all I'm seeing. And I love you, Dad. See you soon. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Guests on the Dan Lebatar Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. Get in touch with the show anytime to the 1-800-Flowers Twitter feed at Lebatar Show, at Stugat 790 at Greg Cody. Life special events call for a beautiful bouquet from 1-800-Flowers.com. Right now, when you order a dozen Gerber or Daisy starting at twenty nine ninety nine, you'll also get a free vase. It's a great deal. Simple to order. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. Greg Cody lost at the grid of death, and they just played on ESPN Ooze. They just played the video of him in a Zardos costume. It's magical. It's amazing. Uh, if you don't know what Zardos is, it's a Sean Connery joint from the 1970s, <laughs> and it's a thong type thing. And he's looking at the screen, and he's feeling legitimate shame, but not as much shame as his grandson is feeling right now because the Cody family war lineage has been revealed to be a lie. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> but first, Bud Grant is going to join us in 15 minutes. Yeah. Your 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 son and the war hero's grandson is feeling a great deal of shame right now and has been throughout the segment throughout the segment because grandpa's life might be a lie. Uh no. Okay, we'll we'll get back to it in a second. Okay. I just, mean, I'm you, defending you, you, my family You'll get your here. chance. You'll right. get your he's, chance. He's just a little bit concerned and confused. And, and, and disgusted. Like, he's learning things. Like, he was, we were in the other room, and he's like, how can my father not know which war my grandfather fought in? Like, but anyways. Yeah, it's World War Two. I mean, we'll yeah. get to that the in a big second. one. Yeah. <laughs> that you forgot. So, Bud Grant is going to join us, and this is an annual tradition around here. We've gotten real friendly with the old grump. He has a garage sale. He's a former Vikings coach that every year has a garage sale. It's very famous. We bother him every year. He gets mad at us. Every year is his last garage sale. That's right. Yeah. He, he's a bit of a fraud. In he's a bit of a fraud <laughs> slash salesman. Put it on the poll, Guillermo. Bud Grant. Is Bud Grant a fraud salesman in regard <laughs> to his garage sale? Because it's always the last one. And then next year, the garage is always full again. Yeah. It's a clearance sale that never gets cleared. He's 90. What do you like? Ninety one. Happy birthday, Bud Grant. It's ninety one on May twentieth. Okay, it's not his birthday yet, though. Yeah, happy birthday to him. I don't care. Good luck. I'm excited. I can't wait to see what he has this year. Last year, remember, he had totem poles. Uh, That's right. <laughs> those nice. were the big items. So, From Alaska. If you're unfamiliar with Bud Grant's work on the program, Mike, save the best for last. But there are a couple of short clips that will give you an indication. He's a grizzled old football coach. He, at like 88 years old, when the Vikings were still playing outdoors, he ran out like, you know. With, when they were actual Vikings. Yes, that's right. He yeah. was coaching them when they were actual Vikings. Thank you, Mike. So uh, Bud Grant, uh, when he's not happy with someone who tries to haggle with him at a, the garage sale, because there is no haggling, this is the insult that he hits them with. They go walk. Take a walk. Take a walk. <laughs> it's just an old timey. Uh, yeah, he's got no time for haggling. The, the price is as is. No, I'm no negotiation. Take a walk. <laughs> uh, he also is a, uh, a a serial grunter of of grumpy fury. <laughs> <laughs> Make a song out of that to introduce Bud Grant, please, Mike. <laughs> By the way, it was a recent Vikings game because they had some uh, success. He did the coin toss. He went out. It was negative six degrees out, and he was the only guy wearing a short sleeve shirt. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Were we going to do this show from his house this year for the garage sale? It was one of those hard things to plan because you didn't know if there was going to be another garage sale. No, he flatly told us last year that that was the last garage sale. So That's we, not the joke, Mike. Let's make it. <laughs> he's 91. <laughs> so he's going to be on with us shortly. But we also had this awkward conversation, weirdly, with the, I believe, four-time conference champion, Bud Grant, uh, about whether when he wipes, he sits or stands. Just an awkward, indelicate question here um, at, that we've been talking about all day, and I understand it's probably not appropriate, but I am curious, and I've been, we've been doing it with all our guests here. Uh, when going to the bathroom, uh, Bud Grant, and, and, and finishing with his bathroom experience, uh, the, the wiping experience, uh, sitting or standing? Uh, I repeat that. I, I didn't get oh, the gist of that. Oh, please repeat that. Uh, uh, you want me to try? Yeah, you try okay. it. Bud, when, uh, after you have dinner tonight and you celebrate the uh, you celebrate the garage sale, um, when you go to the bathroom, 
Um, afterwards, not one, but two, bud. Uh, will you sit or stand when you wipe? Well, that uh, depends on uh, the consistency of what I'm doing. <laughs> Thank you, bud. <laughs> Uh, so you heard me stumble around, and then Stugatz burst into the room like a superhero. I got this, Dan, and he still beat it. <laughs> Stugatz got in there. This is my department, the bathroom, <laughs> standing. There are many people in our audience right now saying, wait a minute. You stand when you wipe? Who stands when they wipe? <laughs> many people are saying, what do you mean? Who sits, <laughs> Who sits when they wipe? They go walk. A lot of people here learning for the first time. That others wipe differently than they do. More people are learning that right now on the air than aren't learning it on the air. So, Chris, let's get to the shame you have with your father and his brother, Uncle Dick. Uh, you've been, can we, can we get Uncle Dick back on the line? You guys got him back on the line? Can you get him back on the line? Uh, I want to yell. I want you to just yell at your, your father and his, his brother. Uh, about everything happening in their life. If you're just joining us and don't know this story, there's reputed to be a Purple Heart in the Greg Cody family, but Greg yep. Cody has never seen it, and his his brother Dick has seen it. Thank you, Mike. All right, so Dick is there. Dick has actually held it, the Purple Heart, but the Purple Heart does not have their dad's name on it. I'm just made sad by all this. I grew up thinking that my pop was this uh, decorated war veteran. And he was. And I just don't know what to believe. I can't really trust my dad on this, so I want to go to my uncle like... What happened? Like you said, five years ago, he got this. Oh, you, you saw this. Like where? Where is it? Where has it been? Well, that's a good question. But uh, getting back to the inscription, I don't know that a purple heart is Dan, Stu, and Greg Cody on ESPN Radio. Ryan, I don't know how else to say this, so I'll just say it. What is it, Linda? I think we should see other people. Are you breaking up with me on a roller coaster? Well, we do have a lot of fun. Maybe we should stay together. An emotional roller coaster? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. I just need a little me time. Ah! Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Don Lebatard. That, that was Will Smith's magic wand for a long time. <laughs> just get a bunch of things on the screen that people will notice and I could just be among them. <laughs> Hell, that's my trick too. I surround myself with funny looking and funny acting people so that people won't notice that I'm kind of dry by comparison. That's what like all of you, for. all of you weirdos. Like that's what I do. I'm surrounded by orcs. I'm sitting here blaming Will Smith and all I'm doing is seeing him right in the mirror. Stugatz. I'm jealous now of Will Smith because he did it so much better. I'm just sitting here with you and my dad. I'm your orc. Yeah. My dad and a troll. That's pretty good. That was good. I mean, I finger pointed him. <laughs> I've arrived at a point yes! where I'm yes! celebrating jokes against me. Yes, I just called you a troll and Stugatz saluted me by pointing one of his sausage fingers at me. <laughs> this is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. So Bud Grant, as we told you, uh, made it to the Super Bowl a whole bunch of times. Famous Vikings coach, one of the most legendary coaches. And he's got a legendary garage sale. Starts tomorrow, 5 p.m. Central. No early birds. Listen to me. No early birds. 5 p.m. Central. And this, I imagine, Bud is a disciplinarian and punctual. It runs all day, Thursday and Friday, until he runs out of stuff. 8134 Oakmere Road, Bloomington, 55438. I think we've learned he never runs out of he stuff. He never runs out. <laughs> uh, he, every year is the last year, and then there's more stuff in the garage. Bud Grant joins us now. It's a very busy time for him. We appear, uh, we, we appreciate, Bud, that every year you come and you join us. Uh, so no tailgaters allowed either? No early birds, no tailgaters? Well, it's, you know, I, let me clear something up right away. It's my garage sale at my, under my name at my house. Uh, but it's a family garage sale too. As I remember I have six children, twelve great grand, twelve children, uh, nineteen grandchildren, twelve great grandchildren. So they all contribute something. So there's something for everybody. It's not just football stuff. There's a lot of football stuff, a lot of Viking stuff. But uh, it some, you know, you, you name it, we got it. Which year was the biggest one, and how many people attended? I don't keep track. I only keep track of the till. I don't keep track of how oh. many people come. All right. You well, know what? Which year was you most profitable? Forgive us. Forgive yeah. us. Now, you told us last time, hey, what are you, the tax man? You ain't giving us any <laughs> details, but can you give us an idea of what the till was the greatest day that the till was the till? 
I'm not. Uh, I'd have to have all my kids put their tally, and I don't know what that is. But it's worthwhile. Let me put it that way to go through all this work, and and now it looks like the weather might might cooperate. Last year it rained, but it didn't seem to dampen the crowd at all. Uh, we, we we've got a good crowd and a good a uh, lot of biking fans, of course. But as I said, there's something here for everybody. We've got sporting goods. Uh, you know, if you want a bike or a car, uh, a car, ex- you're selling cars. A car. You're selling cars now, bud. No, no, no. A car accessories. Oh, okay. accessories. Okay, right. Right. fog lights and stuff like that. Anyway, right. it's all here, so uh, you won't know until you get here. Now, I, I do have a commemorative uh, print that I've conjured up on canvas. My career, blah blah blah. <laughs> uh, that'll be the highlight of the. So last year was a bobblehead. We but wait a minute, a what kind of Way sales job, it, bud? bud? What kind of sales pitch is that? <laughs> He's mine. He doesn't my, have my, to do my a sales career. Pitch. Blah blah blah. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, I didn't get your. You were talking over yourself. Yeah. Uh, you're right. <laughs> All right, bud. Uh, you are very punctual, though, right? You are. When, what I the assumption I made is correct. That if you say five p.m. Central, you mean five p.m. Central. Well, I have a rope across the um, the driveway. There'll be people lined up here, and then they, exactly at 5 o'clock, I blow my whistle, and up they come. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, you know, it, it's a driveway, lawn, neighbor, family, garage uh, sale. So uh, it's, it's kind of a social event, too. And we don't sell ice cream and popcorn, but we sell everything else. How much for the whistle? I'll buy it right now, bud. How much for that whistle? How much for the whistle? Yeah. Well... Uh, you know, <laughs> I can sell it to you, but I got remember I got a lot of whistles. No though. early birds, bud. <laughs> what happened to your rule? No uh, early birds. No, we play music and everything, so they're entertained until any five any liquor. Is anyone allowed to come by with uh, with drinks in a cup? With what? Drinks in a cup, like drinks, uh, liquor. No, no, we don't. Uh, there's, there's no, we don't serve anything, and we don't. Uh, if you bring a cup or something, you might spill it on something valuable. So we don't, uh, we discourage that. We don't, uh, we're not a cop. We're not trying to be cops here. We're just trying to have a good time with mm-hmm. a lot of uh, people. And it, it works out pretty good. It's a good time of year to get out and enjoy weather and, and get some bargains. What's the, uh, <laughs> what's the big ticket item this year, bud? What is the uh, big item? Well, we've got uh, everything. There's nothing under a dollar. We don't deal in change. Everything's a dollar and up to two thousand dollars. Woo! Well, what's two thousand wow. dollars? Like, give me Woo! an example of something that's two thousand dollars. Well, we've got some antiques here that are worth some money, and uh, from anything from guns to furniture to uh, apparel, you know. Wait a minute, Bud! You're selling guns out of your house? <laughs> yeah, I've got guns. I've always had guns. Yeah. How many guns you got? I've sold most of them at my garage sale or given them to my family, my kids. So I'm not a gun collector. I'm a gun user. So. Are there, are there, what is the most popular item? Autographs. Ah, right. yes, of course. Yeah. And how much are those? You got to figure it out. Every, everything you buy here, if you want it autographed, and, and, and it's $25 for an autograph on anything, whether it's a, uh, you know, a card or a you know, piece of clothing or hard goods. Any autograph on anything, yours or mine, is $25. <laughs> yeah. I love this. What if cheap. someone says, I only have 24 or something like that, bud? What? Take what a happens? walk. Take a walk. See, for example, I've got cards here from the Hall of Fame, from Winnipeg, from uh, sports cards, uh, bubblegum cards. I've got a dozen different cards of myself. And this sounds like an ego trip, but I'm just trying to get rid, of, get rid of them already. So I got lots of cards. If they're card collectors, I've got them. But I'm surprised that um, this thing, this annual garage sale, has never caught on with your contemporaries. I feel like if uh, bitter rivals like Don Shula and Marv Levy had their own garage sale, do you think it would be bigger and better than You'd yours? You'd crush them. You'd crush them. You're a veteran in the industry. Well, I'll tell you what. It's it's a strange. It's you bring that up. You know, you talk about. Say Tom Landry, one of the great coaches in the league. When they fired him, he never went back to the. He never went back to the Cowboys, and uh, and uh, you know, and Chuck Noll, when he let him go at Pittsburgh, I think he's one of the greatest coaches in the National Football League. He never went back to Pittsburgh. Never went in the office again. They kind of threw him out. I've been with the Vikings for over fifty years. I got it. They built a new uh, facility out here at Egan. I got a nice big office. I've been here for fifty years. Somehow. 
Uh, I don't know. I'm, I've been worrying pretty pretty well and very grateful to the Vikings for keeping me around as long as they have. Well, but how does this work? Why, when it's 20 below zero, are you going out onto the field in a short sleeve shirt? You're talking about Minnesota now. Minnesota is different than a lot of places. Our fans are some of the best. And one of the things they grew up with years ago, remember, the television was all regional. It, you know, we they televised the Midwest and they televised the West Coast, and they didn't have the and the East Coast, and they didn't see us much until the playoffs. And every time they see us, we we're playing in the cold weather. So we've got a mystique that still has carried over to Minnesota, even though we play in you know nice stadiums now and mostly indoors. Um, the mystique is still there. Minnesota is a little bit different than anybody else in the country. And they, you say Vikings. That's all you got to say. They know where the Vikings are. Again, his garage sale starts tomorrow, 5 p.m. Central. No early birds. It runs all day, Thursday and Friday, until they run out. <laughs> 8134 Oakmere Road, Bloomington, 55438. You are not to come there with change. And, <laughs> and yes, thank you, bud, for no reiterating change, that. Yes, Don't come yes. with any change. He doesn't want your change. Well, we don't we don't take credit cards either, so come and cash. Ooh, cash. All right, you got to come with wow. that cash. Yes. And uh, and so there. And if they want an autograph on anything, it's twenty five dollars. What's the strangest thing they've asked Bud Grant to autograph? Oh, somebody had me autograph their butt one year, so that's oh, the strangest wow. one. Baby. How did that go? <laughs> Qu- quickly. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> All right, a little bud. extra for that bud, one, <laughs> but you should have charged a little extra. You should have said, you know what? It's going to be thirty dollars yeah. for this one. No, Left no, cheek no, or right? No, 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 no. The other thing is, is everything is priced and it's not negotiable. That's right. In other words, I don't have time to sit here and argue about a dollar here or a dollar there. If the price is on there, and if right. you can't afford it, or you think it's too much, don't buy it because the guy behind you will buy it. You're an well, assassin. Right. But what if it's the end of the weekend? No, it's no. the last item. Last, last item. And the guy wants to give you a dollar. At less. the end, can they wear Bud down with uh, like uh, just a dollar less? No, 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 no. <laughs> I got no time. There's too many people here. I can't negotiate with everybody. I just gotta, you know, say hi and how are you and thanks for coming and here's your uh, here's your thing and put the money in the till and who's next? And I'll sign your butt. Yep. You charge yeah. for small talk. Oh well, sure. Everybody yeah. wants, you know, but there's no, uh, you know, we discourage selfies. Uh, that you know takes up too much time. Uh, <laughs> and every, you know, not everybody's got one of them stupid cameras. Hold on, on their hold phone. on, Bud. Can you give us all the rules? Because I love your rules. Can you just give us all the rules to the Bud Grant garage sale? The rules: bring bring cash. No negotiation. It starts at five o'clock. And the reason we have it then is because that's when the people come that have the money are coming from work. Right. We started at 8 in the morning, got all the little old ladies with their $2 bills. And it was, so we started at 5 o'clock, and people are coming home from work, and it's more convenient. It's on a Wednesday. Nobody else has a garage sale on Wednesday. Play. <laughs> you, you've cornered the market. Right. Will you yeah. accept right. a dollar that's coin? A, we've learned over the, over the years that that's a, a good time. A good question yeah, here from Greg Cody. Will you, ex, uh, will you accept a dollar coin or a $2 coin? We'll take any uh, Bitcoin you got. Oh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Okay. Bitcoin as well. You're taking Bitcoin. That's yep. a, that's an upset. You don't take credit cards, but you take <laughs> that's Bitcoin. That's an upset. Bud. Huge upset. All right, bud. Thank you. We'll check in with you the next couple of days, and you yes. won't answer our calls yeah. because you're too busy. Thanks for your call, guys, and have a good day. Right, last year, right, bud? You bet. Yep. No, 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 no. Uh, what? No, no, I didn't say that. Oh, okay. Not the last year? Okay. This isn't well, the last I'm 91 year? year? I'm 91 years old now. Who can count on 92? All right. Okay. We'll make yep. that decision later. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll talk to you next year, and we'll be there. We'll All be right, there. All right, bud. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You bet. All right. <laughs> Splash! How is it that every year that's so delightful? I don't know. <laughs> I love that, man. <laughs> Don Libertard. You could get the delicious, succulent ham shank... Or butt portion. They said butt portion. And I thought to myself, I'd eat the butt, but I don't want to know that I'm eating the butt portion. Stugatz. Is the butt portion a delicacy of yeah, some sort? It very much is. I can testify to this. Uh, the cut of meat, when I make pulled pork, slow cook a pork roast to make pulled pork, the cut of meat I use is called the Boston butt. So it's a delicacy. I eat butt all the time. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. Stugatz is all excited because he saw LeBron shirtless nine and a half hours oh. before the game in Boston. 
dribbling a basketball and showing people that this is the night, that this game, the LeBron game, Stugatz has been predicting all season comes tonight. Well, I mean, he's had a couple of games so far in the playoffs that have been pretty good. But, I mean, nine and a half hours before the game, there is no one in that arena except for LeBron and some guy that he's working with. And LeBron is shirtless. And I can't take my eyes off of it. And he is dunking, and he is taking fadeaway J's, and he's got earbuds in, and the guy he's working with is trying to give him advice, and LeBron is slapping his hand away saying, hey, been here before. I got this tonight. Don't worry about it. Like, he doesn't need advice from the guy he's working with. It's it's absurd, but I can't stop watching it. I mean, man. Whew. I just wish at one point in my life I looked anything close to really it. yes really yes okay. well in terms of just being ripped i mean yes yes he is pretty physically in good shape I, I i wish i was in shape i mean that that right there is the end of espn's ability to talk about lebron oh, no, i thought not. it was brian winhorn saying he walks better than everyone else but yeah. stu god saying he's in shape no 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 i got say- saying lebron james is is in great shape i'm saying i just wish i could be in that kind of shape just at one moment yeah, in my yeah. life to be in that kind of peak physical yeah. condition would yeah. be awesome you never been in shape right in my 20s yeah <laughs> i looked a little like lebron in my 20s physique was wind horse next don lebertard <laughs> Do you mind cleaning that up and tearing up papers and stuff when we're not on the air? Stugatz. I did it without really thinking. It was far from the mic. Didn't think it'd pick it up. As a kid, I used to make the sound of ripping paper. I used to delight my friends with that. Mm-hmm. Also, you can go like that. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. So LeBron James is at the facility already because this is one of those nights. I mean, they're, the noise is going to get very loud if they lose tonight. Uh, Brian Windhorst joins us now. Thank you, as always, Brian, for making the time. Was the first game of Boston-Cleveland just one of those one-game samples where Cleveland wasn't hitting any threes and that'll even out? Or did Brad Stevens figure something out about how to guard LeBron James and the perimeter, or both? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this Cavs team is very difficult to read uh, during the season. They've had many embarrassing blowout losses. They've rebounded for some of them. They've turned them into streaks both ways. I mean, this is a team that has had, you know, I think, you know, they had three or three, I think, streaks of uh, seven or eight wins or more, and they just came off a streak where they were seven and one. They had a couple of weeks where they were the, one of the worst teams in the league. So um, very hard to predict. I don't think there's anything special that the Celtics did defensively. Um, you know, they played a, um, a defense, a switching defense, which is, you know, sometimes successful, sometimes not. I think the Cavs were very lethargic um, going in. I think LeBron was the leader in that clubhouse, too, of being very lethargic. They didn't make the Celtics have to work that hard. So we'll see. Um, you know, in years past, um, I felt uh, like I could have had a better feel for Cavs and LeBron teams. I don't have a, a real good feel for this team. So well, if, if it were to really end, useful. if the Cleveland experience were to end, Brian, excuse me for interrupting you there, if it were to end, wouldn't this be about how it would look? Wouldn't game one, if if this series is the last for LeBron in Cleveland, don't you think that the first game is the way that that would look if he was going to get upset by the Celtics? I mean, I guess, but again, Dan, go back and look. Even the team that won the championship had blowout bad playoff losses. Um, it's just sort of the nature of the team. Last year, um, LeBron had a miserable game against the Celtics, uh, had an 11-point game against the Celtics in the playoffs. They lost. Um, you know, you could have said, oh, my God, the series is pivoting. They're turning it around. And then the Cavs slapped on the next two. Of course, back then they had Kyrie Irving. Um, you know, I just – I will tell you, I'll put, I'll put, let me just say this way. What happens in this series, what happens in this postseason, I don't think has an impact on what happens with LeBron this summer. I know that's what people are going to jump to. They're going to say, oh, they lost in the conference finals, so LeBron's got to go. Or they they won one game and they reached the finals and they got to game six. He's got to stay. That's not going to be the case. You know, He knows what this team is, and there's no mystery here. It's not like, oh, I wonder if this team can get over the hump. It, it, that's not the way it is. It's not like it was the last time around in Cleveland. The die is cast. He knows exactly what he has. Um, his decision this summer will be predicated on what his choices are, not predicated on how this season ends. But do you think he's made a decision to leave Cleveland yet? 
Oh, come on, Stu. That's a ridiculous question. <laughs> Why? I don't think it's ridiculous at all, Brian. But after I mean, what he just said, you weren't listening to anything he just no, said. No, I heard everything he just said, but no. Yeah, so you're, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, in fact, he's already packed up. Um, it's, he's, he's living out of uh, corporate housing because that's, uh, hey, that's housing breaking news. Right no, but, but why would it yeah. be ridiculous, Brian? When we all know, like we know, there were conversations for years leading up to those three coming down to Miami. So why would it surprise everyone if him and his team have already made some sort of decision? Like, hey, I'm out of here after the season, regardless of what happens. I agree with you. But, I don't think this postseason you don't, you happens. You don't have any information, and Brian does. Brian has sources on this. I have history, and, but you're not listening to what he said, though. When you ask him, has he made a decision yet? Windhorse said that that. I mean, you could disagree with what Windhorst is saying. You could say, that sounds ridiculous, Brian. He usually decides these things in advance. No, the, the, this is different than the last two free agencies. Number one, the situation he's in is different. Number two, there isn't a situation out there that's extremely attractive, at least not right now. Um, you know, there isn't a Miami waiting out there. You know, also in 2010, I thought Chicago would have been a great situation for him, too. It, it, Miami ended up working out best. But had he gone to Chicago, that would have been a great option too. Um, in 2014, he had a couple of options as well. I, I don't, I don't love any of the options, and I don't think he does either. And so I think yeah, he's really focused on getting through this this uh, season, seeing and trying to maximize what he's got, and then he'll evaluate what his choices are. I mean, one of the things on the table, and I mean, I, I don't necessarily think he'll go this route, but one of the things on the table that I think has to be explained is. He has an option in his contract that he can pick up for one more year. And it's not because he would be in love with the Cavs situation, um, but it may be because he's just not in love with his other options. And I know there are people out there listening going, what are you talking about? You can go to Philadelphia. Uh, I don't think Philadelphia is the greatest option for him. Uh, I know that on paper it looks beautiful, but he would have to massively change his game to fit in there, or Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid would have to change their games to, to fit. I don't think it... It's, it, it makes as much sense. Um, I, I also don't think it makes much sense for him to go west. Um, I, I just, I watched that, 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 that those two teams last night. Um, you know, I, I don't, you know, what team is being created in the next six months that's going to compete with those two teams? I just, I just don't see it. So I think, you know, the choice is where can he have an opportunity to win? And also, this is something else, too, that's important to realize is different from before. Um, he's got a 13 and an 11 year old boy. His, his, uh, Second son's about to turn eleven in a couple in like ten fifteen days. Here, they're going to have a voice in the decision this time. Before they were little kids, they didn't know any better. He's going to go to his family and say, "Well, how do you feel about this? Do you do you want to move? Uh, are you okay with me moving? Or you know, what are we going to do? This is this is a different situation than last time. Um, and you know, uh, I, you know, even in two thousand fourteen, you know, remember it was one one, and they were coming home in that finals. Uh, had the Heat, you know, you know, the Heat in some quarters were favored. It turned out that they were clearly the inferior team, but it was 1-1 coming home and they lost game one of that series because LeBron had to leave the game with cramps. Um, you know, had the Heat won that to win their third straight title, LeBron was not leaving. So you have to wait and play it out till the finish line, especially this year. Brian, with, with none of the options being great, uh, it, it almost sounds like the, the, the leading contender might be Cleveland to keep them for at least one more year. Is that, if if, Brian, that if right? Brian's saying that, he'd be the uh, he's one of the few saying it. Well, I think it's on the board, um, but I also think we see crazy maneuvering um, that happens in the league every year. Like you know, last you know what is today May fifteenth. Last May fifteenth, we had no clue of the things that were going to happen by you know June first um, or July first. We had a lottery tonight. I mean. The league is going to change tonight. Stuff's going to happen tonight that's going to change the league. And then we have a draft where stuff's going to happen. I mean, we've seen major trades with the draft every year. So the best option for LeBron may not have presented itself yet. It may not even be a genesis yet because, um, you know, we have to see what happens with the lottery tonight. What if the Cavs? What if the Cavs win the lottery tonight? Right. What if another team, you know, you know, what if Philadelphia, who has the 10th pick, what if that pick hops up to number two and the pick goes and transfers to Boston and Philadelphia loses that potential trade asset that they could use to help bolster their team and change it? I mean, there's, you know, the, the league is ever-changing, 
And especially when you're talking about something that's this important and this big, you're going to want to wait to get all the information. I know that's not the hot take everybody wants. Everybody wants to slap that sticker right on. And if the Cavs lose tonight, which is very possible, they're going to, you're going to slap that sticker right on and say he's ready to go. But I'm telling you, in this particular case, with this particular team, I don't think the results matter as much as what the options are uh, come July 1st. What are you expecting from him tonight? What are you expecting from them tonight? Well, you'd expect him to bounce back. And, you know, he went through the whole rigmarole this morning of coming in early and, um, you know, getting shots up. He looked very he – looked, he looked like he had just spent two or three days on the beach to me um, when game one started. He did not play with the kind of force you need to play against the Celtics with. And maybe that's because of Toronto. The, the, in my opinion – the Raptors weren't physical at all with the Cavs, and the Celtics were very physical, and it was like almost a shock to the system, and maybe they needed to be shocked into that. He, you know, he knows that uh, he's come back from 2-0 before, um, but he knows that with this team, he doesn't have the firepower. So this is a pretty darn important game if, for this team to, 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 you know, to pull off getting through a series where you don't have home court advantage. It's, you know, he's done it many times, but you know, this, he, this, is a, this is a weaker team than he's had in a long time, guys. This is a four seed. There's a four seed for a reason, um, because they have some flaws with their roster. Is Brian Windhorst, accomplished journalist, not a hot take guy, does degrees, does nuance, is he willing to say right now, put his name on Chris Paul as a dirty player? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are, are, does Chris Paul commit plays that are that are dirty? Yes. Does he a dirty Exhibits player? the I'm behavior of a dirty player? <laughs> Exhibits I mean, the behavior of a dirty player. Dwayne Wade's made dirty plays in his career. Whoa, he wouldn't call dirty whoa, play. whoa, whoa, not the question we asked. Not the question, you defensive asked. please. Oh, whoa. Good Lord. <laughs> Never did anything wrong except go to Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, we'll talk to you next time. Thank you, Take sir. Take care, guys. Have a good week. Yeah. Bye-bye. Cash more of the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats, 10 to 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. Don Lebatard. There's a belief that there's gold in the heads of bald men. So police in Mozambique are warning bald men. Stugats. I'd cut my own head off if I were bald. See if there's gold in there. I like money. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. This is uh, Ron McGill's final appearance for a few weeks. He makes an annual trip, and this year he's going somewhere, and so he's going to be gone for the next couple of weeks. Too many numbers for you guys. The telephone number is 786-456-4837, but The Athletic, talking about Draymond Green last night, 38 box outs uh, for the Warriors. He had 18 of them, and no one else had more than seven, and no Rocket had more than five. Do you care? Nope. Okay. Ron McGill with us on Box Outs. ESPN Radio. I was just talking about him doing the dirty stuff, man. He's perfectly happy. He can give you the LeBron game in Game 7, or he could just spend the whole game boxing out and be perfectly happy with it. It's unusual. You could tell he likes to do the dirty stuff without telling me how many times he boxed someone out. Okay. Oh, really? Jeez. How many times did he dribble the ball? You're boxing out an audience right now. Uh, 786-456-4837 is the telephone number. Uh, Stu Gatz and Greg Cody are against, uh, new information. <laughs> put it, put it on the poll, Guillermo, at Levitard Show. Are Stu Gatz and Cody allergic to new information that might open their mind? It's new and it's too much information. Yeah. Here's the only number I care about. Golden State Warriors 1, Houston Rockets 0. Correct. That's, That's schmatz. <laughs> so let's take calls here with Ron McGill of Zoo Miami. Seven eight six four five six four eight three seven is the number. Anthony, you're on with McGill. Go ahead. Hey, Ron. Hey, guys. How you doing? Ron, I got a question. I have a Holland Lop Rabbit, and I've been playing with her recently, and I take, like, her little bed and agitate her with it, and she gets on her rear legs and kind of attacks it and grunts. Is she just playing, or is that does she take that as aggression? Thank you. No, that really is aggression. Rabbits don't really play much. You'll find that most... Um, animals that are normal prey species don't really play much because they don't usually get played with, they get eaten. So uh, <laughs> that, is, that, that, is a, that is a defense mechanism that's going up there. So I wouldn't do that too often because you're probably stressing her out a little bit. Jim, you're on with Ron McGill of Zoo Miami. Go ahead. Yeah, Ron. Um, I talked to you a few days ago. I always wanted to swim with the manatees. After talking with you, I decided that's not a good idea. 
but I was wondering if an alternative experience would be swimming with Dan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez, it started early today. That was good. <laughs> that was you you suck up on me with your voice, sir. Was I really good. wasn't expecting that. You tricked me with your voice. Excellent work. <laughs> oh, you I mean, it deserves it. It deserves it. It's an excellent call. And, yes, I will be doing that after the show for $25. Anybody who wants to swim with a manatee, I've got my my swim trunks. We'll just float around in the Clevelander pool together. Parker, you're on with Ron McGill of Zoo Miami. Go ahead. If there were absolutely no consequences, what animal would you eat? Like an endangered animal or any unique animal? But Don't worry about the consequences or anything. Wow. God, I have no, I have no desire to do that. I, I, I don't. That's you know, not what he's asking you. I, yeah, I know, but I mean, I, 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 I don't have the urge. So it's not like something I'd want to do, but wouldn't do it because of consequences. I have no urge. I mean, I mean, I, I hate to say this, I'm, I, I like a good prime rib. So you know, a good black Angus. Mm. Uh, Ron, so we've been told now that uh, dinosaurs are actually closer to birds and right. not these, you know, trudging uh, reptiles. Does that mean dinosaurs were, you know, white meat? Did they taste more like chicken than steak? Really? Do you think dark meat is found on birds also? No, I understand that, but I, do they taste more like chicken or steak? What is going on with the show today? I All mean, right, play it. You don't they, get the show! No, Sh- uh, run, if they're closer to birds than reptiles, I'm having a chicken, not a steak, All right, right? put it on the poll, Guillermo. What do dinosaurs taste like, chicken or steak? Shalom, you're on ESPN Radio. Go ahead. Hey, what's going on, Ron? So, I mean, we, know, we know that birds have some really good sense of direction. They can fly in my home. Maybe you have up there. You're the sense of direction of me, birds. Bro. Can you tell us about the sense of direction of birds? Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, birds rely on several things. It can be the stars, it can be the sun, and it actually can be the magnetic field of the Earth. All three of those things play a role in the sense of direction for birds. John, you're on with Ron McGill of Zoo Miami. Go ahead. Wow. Yeah, we've had, we're having some trouble here. Chris, you're yeah, on ESPN quality, Radio call. with Ron McGill. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, I'd like to know why birds don't hurt their feet when they land on a cactus. Thank you. <laughs> good question. Yeah, that's a good question. Very that's a very good question. Yeah. Uh, basically, birds can develop calluses on their feet, uh, much like you and I do. Uh, you can look at People like, uh, you know, you go to the go to Africa and some of the places in Asia, or, uh, some of the indigenous people living in places. I mean, I've been in the, in the Amazon rainforest with thorny things all over the ground, and the indigenous people are running barefoot through there without getting pierced by these thorns. So birds build up adaptions, but also most birds have very thin toes that don't land on the spines. They land between the spines. But having said that, again, they build adaptions. They build up callous feet that can withstand the puncture. Ron, you know the, the big story down here is that Columbus High, a high school in Miami, uh, at a jungle-themed prom, allowed a caged tiger. Uh, yeah. w- your thoughts? Well, obviously it wasn't very well thought out. I don't know what they were thinking to bring a tiger into that type of situation, especially here in Miami. Not too long ago, they brought a horse into a nightclub, and, and it was a, a total disaster. So what would make you think it's okay to bring a tiger into a prom surrounded by kids with flashes and phones and people juggling fire and disco music and disco lights? And it was just, re- it wasn't very well thought out. I think the response that they've gotten, not just locally, but nationally, has educated them very well and hopefully educated to a lot of other people that we don't use animals like that as a source for, of entertainment. Uh, these animals need to be respected. They need to be admired, not exploited for human entertainment. Give me a number of athletes in your career who have asked you to acquire a tiger for them? It seems like all of them. The biggest one was Shaq. I mean, I, I, I had a drill in the Shaq over and over again. I don't know, I'll pay you, I'll pay you, whatever it is. Uh, I, you, I, don't want to t- I don't want to touch it. I just want to have it. I want to have it. And you, you, I'll pay you, I'll pay you. And I had to say, Shaq, are you out of your mind? Listen to this. And then the only way I got him to stop doing it, I said, you want to be like Mike Tyson? He goes, oh, okay, forget about it. That was it. <laughs> okay, that was it. Uh, John, was it. you're on with Ron McGill of Zoo Miami. Go ahead, John. Hey, Ron, so I was wondering, uh, ever since my wife started expecting our first kid, our dog stopped sleeping in our room and started sleeping in the living room. Is there any correlation between the two? Yes. Um, your wife gives off pheromones. She's giving off different pheromones, being pregnant, and the dog may have picked that up, and for some reason it may be somewhat of a, a repulsion to him. Not, not that he finds it gross or anything, but he just realizes that she's to be left alone. Um, again, animals like dogs pick up 
tiny little scent changes, tiny little pheromone changes. And pregnant women, of course, have different levels of pheromones that can be picked up by these animals, and different animals respond to them in different ways. Gordon, you're on with Ron McGill of Zoo Miami. Go ahead. Hey, Ron. I was just wondering uh, if you had to choose, would you rather spend a night in the ocean or a night in the jungle? And with that being said, if you had to die, would it be from a great white or an anaconda? Thanks. Uh, I'm going to go dying by a great white because that's going to be pretty quick. Um, and I would rather spend the night in the jungle because I'm very familiar with the jungle. I'm not very familiar with the ocean. Um, I don't like being in total darkness and not being able to see or hear what's around me. That, that, that feeling of just floating in the water and just all of a sudden your mind starts playing tricks on you. You think there's all bunch of, and you get that anticipation of disaster is horrible. In the jungle, at least I can hear and I'm more familiar with the jungle. So I'd rather go to the jungle, but I'd rather die by white shark. Anaconda is very slow. Oh, horrible. Jordan, you're on. What is the worst animal death? Hold on a second, Jordan. What is the worst animal death? Um, I would say, like, just a big bunch of bullet ants coming at you. Wow. That would be terrified horrible. of the bullet ants. Jordan, you're on with Ron McGill. Go ahead. Hey, Ron. I'm just wondering why when my female dog is cleaning my male dog's ears, it makes him hump the air. Thank you. <laughs> Doesn't that happen when your wife licks your ears? I mean, it's a normal response. I think it's something that becomes quite, uh, it's, its I don't know, titillating to the dog. It feels good. So it's something that leads, one thing leads to the other. Yeah, only on Sundays. Um, Ron, we were discussing <laughs> we were discussing uh, Chris Paul, and many people feel like he might be the dirtiest player in the NBA. What is the dirtiest animal in the animal kingdom? Not dirty, just, you know, maybe take some cheap shots. Is it the, <laughs> is it the pig or is it something else considered the dirtiest animal in the animal kingdom? Is it what or something else? A snake, you said? The pig? A pig? No, you know, a pig is not really that dirty. That's a big misconception. Pigs are not really that dirty. Just because they like to wallow in mud to keep themselves cool and free of insects, the reality is they're not that dirty. I would think if you're going with dirty, um, geez, um, I I would just got to go, I don't know if you call it an animal, it is logistically an animal, but like a maggot. Maggots are dirty because maggots are feeding off of the, you know, horrible, decaying, rotting things. That's pretty dirty. The buzzard, um, the buzzard is dirty. The vulture is, you know, it's got some really dirty habits, and yes, it does put itself in horrible situations, but it keeps itself fairly clean. The dirty thing about the buzzard is like the, the vultures is when you, you, you stress them out, they, they projectile vomit into your face. <laughs> Ouch. Wow, I did not know that. Guillermo, put it on the poll. Did you know that when a buzzard or a vulture was stressed out, it projectile vomited in your face. We always learn something from you. That's the perfect dismount. No video this week. Enjoy the trip, uh, Ron. We will miss you. Thank uh, you we will talk to you in a few weeks. Look forward to it. Take care, guys. See you, Rob. Don Lebatard. You can't have fun when you're old? Stugats. Look at me. I'm having a ball. Ball on it. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Greg Cody of the Miami Herald in with us. Nice piece uh, in GQ about our friend Bomani Jones. Uh, he and Pablo Torre have a new show, June 4th, coming out. It's going to be a monster because those guys are the future of gas bagging <laughs> at this at this company. <laughs> like, they are, they are just, no, but they're excellent. Like, they, they're they just excellent. And so June 4th, that show starts, and you should read that uh, story in GQ about Bomani because – it is a good read. Uh, Greg Cody, as I told you, is in today. We will do a Back in My Day with him in moments. But first, Mike has some pop culture news for you because Damon Wayans is doing a victory lap on Twitter. And if you uh, don't know, Mike is obsessed with the movie Lethal Weapon in a way that's uh, something between really strange and uh, delusionally obsessive. Uh, he does only one impersonation from that movie, correct? Riggs. Okay, and ah. so now what is happening with Damon Wayans on Twitter? So some of you may not know that there's actually a Lethal Weapon television show in which Damon Wayans plays Merton, a gentleman by the name of Clayne Crawford, who is unknown before the casting, is playing uh, Morton Riggs. Uh, the show's been on for two seasons. It's uh, Fox's fifth highest rated drama, but uh, it appears that the show <laughs> it's high praise. I know. I don't know. Is that good or bad? I don't know. It was, uh, Put it on the poll, Guillermo. If you're Fox's fifth highest rated drama, is that is that a good TV show or a bad TV can show? Can you name another one? I, I mean, mean, I don't know. I, I I don't know much about Fox's 
TV schedule, so <laughs> forgive me. So it was on the chopping block, and it appears as though the show is at a crossroads. Not just will it be picked up for a third season, but it appears that the cast and crew was not going on with this show as long as the guy who played Riggs was still attached. There were all sorts of reports that came out on the heels of the the news that Sean William Scott, a.k.a. Stifler from the American Pie movies, was going to be placing Riggs by playing Riggs' brother, Brother Riggs. Okay? So, <laughs> Murtaugh can still say Riggs, <laughs> which is a key to the whole yes, Lethal Weapon course, experience. Yes, yes. But this dude claimed Crawford, not only was he Martin Riggs, but he directed a couple of episodes, and he made everybody feel super unsafe, to the point that Damon Wayans is now releasing photos and videos of his head bleeding from shrapnel on the opposite side of wherever the effect was. There's all sorts of stories of the guy who played Riggs throwing green tea bottles and busting people's mouths open, and saying that he rel- making women live in fear in fact he posted damon waynes posted a photo of a sticker that said claim crawford is an emotional terrorist (laughs) time now for greg cody's back in my day (laughs) what an intro (laughs) and now it is time to take a trip down memory lane here's your guy greg cody with back in my day getting too old for this bleep Disappearing jobs. When was the last time you were at a party making small talk? Hey, what do you do? And the person you asked turned out to be a shoe repairman, mobile home installer, lumberjack, or postmaster. Disappearing jobs. I have one of those, of course. (laughs) My occupation and I are huffing stride for stride to the finish line, (laughs) wheezing in a race to see who collapses first. Before the poor newspaper columnist can get his opinion online, let alone in print, his take has already been taken and pounded to death in a million tweets across 45 ESPN platforms and on a cacophony of podcasts. Did you know that take theft is America's number one unreported crime? The odds are pretty good. You are in the presence of the greatest of the criminals. (laughs) The odds are pretty good that those two guys commiserating elbow to elbow at a bar are an encyclopedia salesman and a boilerman who shovels coal into a steam locomotive. (laughs) I swear a door-to-door salesman selling fuller brushes actually rapped on my door once. I looked around. I thought I was on candid camera. Travel agents and bank tellers are disappearing by degrees. Commercial pilots are becoming extinct, too. I like to do my part to resuscitate ebbing professions. The other day, I called up the phone company and asked them to send over a guy to install an avocado-colored kitchen wall phone, the kind with the constantly knotted tangled landline. (laughs) Have they stopped making phone booths altogether, by the way? (laughs) Waiters are gradually becoming extinct, too, as more and more restaurants let you order on an iPad right at the table. Have you ever asked a waiter what he recommends and he says, what are you in the mood for? What a pointless exchange between wishy-washy you and a waiter who feels like saying, I'd recommend people quit asking me that, but it never works. You know the one job I most wish we could save and bring back? Toll booth workers. Toll booth workers murdered by Sun Pass and other technology. Yeah, because who wants a moment's pause and respite, a pleasantry of human interaction, when we can just barrel past the dead booth in our hermetically sealed rolling coffins, favoring not even a quick glance left at the weeping ghosts of the kind matron who'd hand you your turnpike ticket and bid you a good day. Technology, as always, takes its toll. I'm Greg Cody, and that's how it was back in my day. Excellent. Also, Roy and Mike weren't listening to anything because they were busy reading Damon Wayans' tweet. Oh, my God. He is losing his mind right now. This is a tweet. He hit another actor in the mouth with a bottle of green tea and busted his mouth open. At Lance Hendrickson, a white man. Damon felt the need to point that out. Hashtag not an accident. Hashtag know your facts. Another tweet. Buy to Twitter and the weirdos who don't understand set decor and privilege. And all that has to do with what we do. Put up with his bleep for two seasons. Kiss a dark side of my bleep if you don't understand. It wasn't just me. At Clayne Crawford, he added him. Oh. He added him. Oh. He has a file of infractions. Release the tapes. Oh.
Don Lebertard. I tell you, I have a knife, a uh, Swiss Army knife, and you know I'm ready to go. All right, whatever you need, I can, I can, uh, I, I can start a fire with two sticks, just like you hear about. I've done it. Stugatz. You've never done it. I have done it. <laughs> no, you surviving haven't. it. This is the Don Lebertard show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. We'll have an update, by the way, on Damon Wayans in just a second for you. Guests on the Dan Lebitard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. Here's your Sports Center update. Despite dealing with food poisoning, Mariners reliever James Pazos pitched an inning and was credited with a win versus the Twins. Baseball player. Despite Ben Zobris being warned by Major League Baseball not to wear noncompliant spikes, he, along with Kyle Schwarber, and Steve Ciszek defied the league in wearing black spikes. Whoa! Rebellion in baseball! How about that? Coming from Steve Ciszek. That's right. <laughs> Steve Ciszek is like Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. <laughs> Fighting for a cause. Black tweets. And finally, Deadpool 2 is receiving strong early reviews with many critics saying... It's better than the first. Deadpool 2 presently has an 82% on Rotten Tomatoes. Gum Out Regain Complete Fuel System Cleaner safely removes carbon deposits to help restore engine performance and maximize fuel economy. Try Gum Out Regain today at AutoZone. Buy one, get one free instantly for a limited time. Gum Out, science in, performance out. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. What's the update on Damon Wayans? Dan, he's deleted his entire Twitter account. Not the oh, tweets. Oh, the no. entire I don't want to live in America. Uh, Guillermo, put it on the poll. Don't take that out of uh, context, Breitbart. I don't want to live in an America where a Wayans brother has to delete his Twitter account. Do you? <laughs> Come on. What do you mean he deleted his Twitter account? Yeah, I mean, he was, like I said, he was adding Clayton Crawford. Like, you know, the whole, you know, cliche at me, bro, just at me. Well, he was, and he was adding him with photos of stickers calling him an emotional terrorist. But put this on the poll as well. Can you call someone an emotional terrorist and then delete your Twitter account? Like, let's go write it out. Wayans. Yeah. He's running and hiding <laughs> so quickly. What happened? Coward. It's okay. Sean William Scott is on the way. Everything's going to calm down on that set. Stugatz, are you going to make a bold prediction on tonight's LeBron game? Are you, uh, because you have not had a doubt all season as the most turbulent season in LeBron's decade has, un, you know, unfolded in front of us. Right. You have a strong pred prediction for tonight or you don't, you don't have a strong opinion? No, I have a strong opinion. I think, you know, I I'm wondering how many times we're all going to get fooled by the same thing. Like they lost game one, big deal. I was a little bit alarmed that Brian Windhorst said they looked lackadaisical headed into that game and that LeBron didn't look right or feel right headed into that well, game. But I feel like strange. everyone looks lackadaisical when you make four of your 20 plus threes. And it was just odd to hear about LeBron James Easter Conference Finals game. Well, but no, I think LeBron will do what LeBron does, which, you know, he'll score, you know, 40, 50 points tonight and, you know, they'll go back to Cleveland one game apiece. My guess is he'll, he'll spend more time at the rim. 100%. Yep. I mean, listen, in this warm-up that I'm looking at, and I've been watching it in a loop for two hours now, he's shirtless with sweatpants on. All he's doing is dunking. That's it. Okay, but that's not... that's. Hey, he's going to the rim tonight. But man. that's useless. He will go to the free throw line at least 15 times tonight. Take that to the bank. Wow, something's yes. been taken to the bank. Bank it. What is the age of someone saying, take that to the bank? Banking it. People don't even go to the bank anymore. I went you to just, the bank the other day. You just did a, you just did, you just did disappearing bank tellers. Cause I, everybody can do this online. Yeah. Now. And when I went to the bank, there were two tellers with a winding snake line of about 15 people. Yep. When I get up to the teller, I'm complaining. Why don't you have more help? And she's like, corporate, this is Bank of America. She's like, corporate reduces us now. We're, we're like a, becoming extinct. The teller herself told me that. Yeah. Been with the company for decades. First bit of reporting Greg Cody has done in journalism in about a decade. Damn right. There is something nice about being in a bank line. There is. There is. What? No, there, yes. no, 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 there no, is. there is not. Yeah, you have some conversations with people. You're handling, Correct. like, listen, like, they told me, like, while you're waiting in line, you could deposit this check that I had. You could do it on the app. 
And I'm like, why would I do it on an app? I don't trust an app. I want to hand it to a person. Yes. I want you to hand me my, you know, a receipt back. I want to do it with a deposit slip. Right. I want to get cash return. They put it in that machine that counts the cash. Yeah. Makes that little riffling sound. Oh, it's the best. (laughs) Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. Love going in my bank. I don't trust those machines. Yeah. Don't you? No, I don't. I don't trust that it's going to count my money properly. I also don't trust ATMs. I always have a panic when I go to an ATM and I deposit a check or I'm trying to take out cash, I need to count it to make sure. And then I'm like, well, what if it gives me the wrong amount? What am I supposed to do with this? How is it that ATMs never make mistakes with the amount that they dispense? Like, how come they never give me six 20s instead of five? Do you like that you could choose now what you want, like 50s, 20s, all that? I don't like that. Just give me my money. Right. I don't, I don't want to make any decisions. To, you know, just give me, you know, if I want $100, give me five 20s and I'm good to go. I prefer all ones. It makes me feel like I have more money. Oh, it's actually yeah. a heady play, yeah. I like the theory and practice, but then when I go and I'm like, I want three fives, and so there's always out of fives. And then I have to get tens, and it's like, why'd you even give me this option? If there's no fives, don't give me the option for fives. Yeah, that's true. Uh, put it on the poll. Do you mistrust the machine? You have I always to. ask for twos. How do you feel about machines that ask you for a couple of dollars just to take money out of it? Like, will you go five? Oh, I and hate they, that. Yeah. Yeah, and some of them now are like 375 It's crazy, yeah. 450 Yeah. You, you, you go to an ATM in a casino or something, it's like five bucks to get 100 bucks. This is the most passion Greg crazy. Cody has shown about a subject in 25 years. I mean, <laughs> here's the difference. I load coins into that coin thing that gives you back cash. They take a vigorish of about eight and a half percent, which I don't mind. No, 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 sucker, yep. sucker. Roll I don't mind that. No, I've done this. Actually, they do all the counting no. for you. Yeah, well, if you go to your bank, you get these bags, you go home, and you put all the coins in the bag. They don't charge you any percentage. No, no, you got to roll your own coins. That's fun. Rolling your own coins. Oh, I used to do that. I had penny 50 rolls. Pennies to a roll. Yeah, that's the best. Yeah, you put those in the in a sock, and it makes a great weapon as mm-hmm. well. It's true. Yeah. What do you think of the pens at banks that have those little chains attached to them? Hate them. If the line moves slightly, you have to kind of abandon the pen and wait till you whip right back around and then right. use the pen again before someone else gets it. Right. They haven't made advancements there, though, because I, I I think I was in a bank recently that had kind of like a telephone wire attached to the pen. It's not an advancement. You, you, you know, it is. If it's just a chain. I know what Billy's talking about. The chain, you have to be right there. The one with the, the little, yeah, yes. it's like little metal balls. Yeah, the little metal yeah, balls. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. bank can't give me a free pen. That's the best thing about staying in a hotel. You know you get to steal three or four pens. Right. Why can't I steal a pen from a bank? My bank wants me to trust them with my money, but they don't trust me with their pen. Exactly. If you steal a pen from the bank, are you robbing a bank? Technically. <laughs> oh, that's a good question. That is a good question. Put that on the poll. Um, well, you steal anything but money from a bank. You're going to have a hard time pawning that pen somewhere when it has the chain attached to it. <laughs> in the name of the bank. It's going to be hard to sell that. No, no, I swear someone gave this to me. <laughs> this pen was stolen, was stolen from Bank of America. I didn't know it was stolen. Uh, what a weird segment. I did not realize there would be this much passion around the bank situation. I will say this. Put this on the poll, please, at Levitard Show. Is it okay that your bank charges you three seventy five to get your money? Do you guys also get worried about the fact that a lot of this is all electronic? Like, at some point, someone can go in and just delete all the numbers, and you don't actually have money. You just have numbers representing money, and it could go anywhere. Guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but your bank, the one you do business with, you could take money out, and you're fine, right? That's right. That's right. No, it's when you use other banks. Right. Okay. Are you just learning this? No, no, no. No, no, no. The way that you said it, it, it matter of factly, which led me to believe that you just live your life aimlessly and (laughs) go to any ATM. No, no, no. I get bothered by those $3 charges whenever I'm using a different bank, too. Because someone, a texter is texting in relentlessly, club space, they charge you $12 to use the ATM. Oh, of course. Because that's, yeah, that's everyone Ah, wandering around. At five o'clock in the morning on Molly. You think that's bad? Try getting the water there. The workaround is you just go to like a CVS or a Walgreens and just buy a stick of gum and you get cash back and you don't get charged a fee. Yeah. I just I want to step back for a second and just marvel in general at Guillermo. Yeah, Guillermo, that would be a really bad thing if the banks collapsed. Yes, that would be bad for America. Uh, that concludes this segment. <laughs> you can listen to the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats, 10 to 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio, and you can watch on ESPN News.